Beckman Unleashed podcast number 21. You ready, Eric? Here's what we got. We are live. We're live. Well, here's what we have on tap for you guys today. We're going to talk about Biden's dog because Commander, I believe his name is, he bit, it, bit someone else. I don't believe you. This is a this is a big problem, and I'm going to give him and his people some advice. Then we've got multiple voicemails to play for you on the number that we gave out, and we will continue to give out in the description. You can call us. One was just the dude was kind of crazy, and it was great, so that's great. Breed of the week. We'll do apologies. We'll do comments, all that good stuff. Sound like plan? Yeah. So can you frame this up? Because I've only seen the headlines of the Biden thing. I don't believe it's true. I think this is just some type of gag. Yeah. But can you at least, especially as it relates to this podcast and to your channel? Okay. So Biden's dog commander is two years old. I made a video two years ago. You can probably type in Biden's dog on my, and I predicted that this dog would be biting people. And I fully predicted it. And I was fully right. And he's bit another person. Now it's 11. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that. So that wasn't the end of the story. So you predicted it, then he bites, right? Yep. And then we did a podcast like six weeks ago about this. Talked about he it. bit someone again. Then he just bit someone again. Secret service person. Is this true? Yes. So he's just going to keep biting people. Apparently. Just yeah. forever. Okay. Apparently the two-year-old dog is president. just going to keep biting. I told you he would probably, this dog would probably disappear at some point. I mean, they, <laughs> they can only, if I'm not getting the call and... Garrett Wing isn't getting the call and Caesar Milan isn't getting the call. If we're not, there's only so many people that can help this dog. Probably just them and Zach George and just a, come, a couple of the top folks. Right? Yeah, just the top folks. Just the people who deal with a lot of aggression yeah, and biting right. of people, right? That's right. Um, if we're not getting the call, then who's who's fixing this? Well, clearly no one's fixing it or he would have it 11 times. This. Yeah. I, I don't, so there, there, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. Okay. Before you lay into this situation, can you just square away for everyone that this is not like you're not trying to start a podcast by attacking the president? I'm not going to attack the president. Okay. So you're going to be surprised at what I say. Oh, okay. All right. So I was thinking about this. It is a problem when the leader of the free world's dog is, dogs are biting people. That is a problem. Okay. You assume that the person has very good leadership skills has very has uh, understands what to do in situations that's what you would assume from the leader of the free world and that is obviously not happening however i have trained powerful people's dogs professional athletes dogs been in their houses and everyone struggles with dog training so i am going to give old joe biden a little bit of a pass and my, the process for fixing this dog even physically due to his age would be difficult for him. I'm so I'm going to give him a bit of a pass and then I'm going to go into something about it Can of, I... of where I'm not going to give him a pass. But you're asking this grandpa to fix his two year old aggressive German shepherd. It's 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 not a, it's it's even bending over. I have old clients and I'm like, OK, treat your dog and they can't bend over to give the dog a treat their physical limitations to people. OK, can I challenge you on this real quick? Sure. Because. It seems that Joel Beckman, who's a bit of a hard ass, I think that's fair to say, uh, in the dog training world, he wants to give a pass to somebody who's had a who has a dog who's bit, bit 11. eleven times. This is so. <laughs> this would seems, you do that to any does other seem person? Strange of me to do. I don't think you would do that to any other client if they had someone in the dog bit someone seven times. Yeah, but aren't Especially, those clients calling me? Yeah, but what if they called you again and again and again? I wouldn't give. Because okay, I mean, I this is the third pass. time we're talking about this, right? The dude is like 80 years old. I think he's more than that. No, no, no. I think he's like 81. Okay. I don't know. I, mean, I, don't I think he's. I think stuff. he's. I think you're right. He's 80 years old. 80 years young. So what? I mean, there's only so much a old grandfather can do with a young German Shepherd. There really is physically. This is a physical thing. This dog training thing is not about. Uh, about treating him and about like there needs to be some hey knock it off some walking in the dog tries to get around you stop him you put him into you there's a physical nature to this and i i actually think i would probably give people a pass if if they were 80 years old but, now he should he have got the dog no I, I told all that thing in my video two years ago i said it all bad decision making 
yeah, there's there's problems here. But but he's got the dog, right? That's one of the tenets of Beckman's dog training. The, he's got the dog, right? We got to deal with the dog. Okay. What's Joe Biden going to fix his dog? He can't fix his dog. We can trash him. We can do all that, but he's incapable of fixing his dog. Okay, I have to stop you there again. Okay, so you're saying that he does not have the ability to fix a German Shepherd. An aggressive German Shepherd, I, that's what I'm saying. But he can fix the entire American economy in the world? He is not capable of that either. Okay, all right, that's fair. But I want to push back because there's 80-year-olds that are watching this that are thinking I'm they're in good shape and they're wondering why you're saying this. Like, for instance, my father's 71 promise you he would not have these problems now that's, granted that's nine years difference maybe you fall off a cliff your you could. your father surfs every day true there's the, so there, did joe these though. are differences okay okay so okay but yeah no i know what you're saying i i'm i i've i thought i wouldn't say long and hard about this but i have thought a bit about this and i'm like okay what am i gonna what is he doing wrong and it's like He's doing a lot of things wrong with this dog. He's done a lot of things wrong with this dog. Okay, how does he fix it now? I'm and I'm going through my head, going, he's not capable of it. Could, oh. Can we get bad bad at people who aren't capable of it? And shame, maybe we can. It just doesn't seem like the right thing to do right now. To say, here's what he needs to do. And listen, there's a lot of mistakes made. This dog's bit eleven people. They're going to the hospital. This is a this is a big problem. And they're not, it's not biting the people we want to be bitten either, right? Secret this service is, people. Secret service. These are protectors. These are important people. Yeah. And and the media is like all giving like passes. Like it says nothing about Joe Biden ever. Well, I guess I'm not either. But it's all like, uh, these are German shepherds. And they and and the, the press secretary, I just read an article. She said, well, the it's a very stressful place to work. Like it's all like all these other excuses as opposed to the leadership of joe biden with his dog being a major problem which is a major problem so how right if you lead the these dog? dogs don't bite people how yeah, often that, is he with the that's dog? what we don't know i mean i'm sure not as much as before probably right he's, he's probably treated like a pariah now they're like <laughs> get away from that dog, and they don't want to get bit right yeah i mean oh yeah for sure he's like off and he pulls uh jill biden like pulls the leash out of her hand and then he goes and bites somebody i just saw that secret service emails obtained by judicial watch and really dry revealed the dog has bitten or threatened at least 10 people making this the 11th incident um someone suggests that while staffers greet commander with a smile secret service agents tend to be colder the white house is just a crazy environment for a dog so so maybe it isn't his so here's what i'm going to say Here's what here here's what I'm gonna say. Okay. The chief of staff or the chief of staff's uh assistant needs to get on this, right? So this has to be put to somebody to go find the person who they're gonna pay to come in the White House and fix this dog. Because they already gave up their other dog who's biting people to what I saw as fret friends or family, friends and family. They gave what they, they gave a dog away, which I have been told through the media and through the force free folks and through all these places that you can't do this, that this is, this is, this is the, the most horrible thing to do to rehome your dog. That's what, that's what people say. People get trashed all the time. This country music singer, their dog like attacked a kid and they like, oh no, they put the dog down. Mm. So I, I want to be clear here. I remember they put the dog down and they got trashed in the media. Okay. But I've been told that rehoming your dog is also really bad and, and, and unacceptable. They just did that with a dog. Now they got another dog. They're going to have to do it with this dog unless they get someone in there. And there's a bout. And you can't mess around. You can't go through five people. They need and, uh, YouTube is that place, right? You got to go on there. You got to see who can do the job. And then I don't want the job. You're going to get it. I don't, I don't want do you know the they job. they haven't called me already? Yeah, maybe they have. I don't want the job. Cause I don't want to go to the place. You want it would be good for YouTube. It'd be a good story, but that, that, that whole, you get in, in that world, you get in sort of this. What are you saying? I don't understand what you're trying to. Yeah, man. To. Go to the white, go into the, just the. Could you fix that dog? How of, quick could you fix that dog? 
I would need to be there a few days because you have to go through the scenarios, right? And you have to say, okay, so-and-so you walk in and then we got to go through the whole staff. You got to actually expose that dog to, to all these different people that he's going after. And if they have two days off, like I have to have that human there. Yeah, It would be two to three hours a day for three days. Just curious. I mean, Maybe one and a half hour a day for three days. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to go out there, but I mean, I would definitely want to go out there with you if you did, but I'm not saying that cool. we're going to throw like a bit out there. But I think if, if like the white house wants to throw like a hundred thousand out there, we can head out. We'll keep it quiet. Um, yeah. At least for the first week of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, a hundred grand. Country. It's for the country. Grand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, I don't know about the, you go into the, there's some sneaky snakes, dude, like cruising around the halls of that place. Yeah. It's like a Have you ever been there? Vile. No? Nah, just think of the, think of what's going on. And like, it's a, it's a dangerous place. Yeah. The, I don't I, know if you want the stink, the stink, the stink on me. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to go home to your family. You and like, you like, still got that. You? Nah, just, it just, you know. You think there's like dungeons or something down there? Like, what are you saying? I don't know. You you get in that world. Is it just? What if I make it? What if I make it mad? You hear about like people who made other people that like I don't want to name or something or no? No, like American politicians. Like you, you got to be careful. Yeah. Okay. So you know this, right? Yeah, but I mean, when someone like like flashes the bat signal, I mean. You got to sh show up, bro. You maybe I'd think about it. No? So, so the, the, the chief of staff has to put someone in charge of getting the right person in there, investing in that person, giving that person access. They need to have access to the oval office if this stuff is hap happening there. And then they got to train the dog, have them sign an NDA, have them do all that. But it, let's say, just say that this is true, that there is 11 maybe aggression slash by incidents that have happened, right? Yeah. I mean, how much of this is now rehearsed in part of the dog's makeup that yeah, it's becoming a normal thing? It's like this podcast. Like yeah. now it's normal that we do this. Like the dog just bites secret service people. This is normal now for him. Yeah. It's a problem. I mean, it's a it's a problem. He's like, oh, it's uh, end of the month. Time to go bite somebody. Yeah, there's a tr there's a trigger, though, because I read this article. They said, oh, P there are certain people he likes and certain people he doesn't. So we got to go in there and first identify the triggers. And this this article might be right. Like the Secret Service people are serious. OK, dogs got to let you got to train the dog to like serious people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there, I would the whole uh, process. I would think that the White House is full of serious people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't know the process. I would have to really think about it but i need i need is that access. a picture of the dog could i see it yeah i've been i've been way out of looking at him all proud he's all proud of his dog it's the silliest thing it's a kind of a handsome dog though he's a good looking dog it's a great german yeah. shepherd right yeah what's up with some of the german shepherds look like they have a really long hair is that a different breed or is that just a long hair german there's shepherd? a long hair german shepherd then there's just german shepherds with long hair there's a one that's right across the street that goes walking. It gives me the heebie-jeebies a bit. It's it looks a bit like a wolf. But yeah, this is a fantastic looking dog. Yeah, yeah and Joe looks pretty pretty pumped on him, you know. But I mean, I don't know how often they're hanging. But well, I, he's got to hang with him more because the dog probably knows that Biden's his dad. And then d where's dad? Oh, he's here at the, when they, when when uh, when the the dog was little. He was a. Uh, he was there. So yeah. So then it starts to separate from his dad. Right. And then he gets all tripped out. Like, why am I with this lady? Well, she's my mom. Well, why, why am I this with, with this walker? And why am I with this person? Joe Biden's got to have a fair amount of involvement in the training if the dog's going to be around him hmm. much. And if the dog's not going to be around him, we can deal with that, too. What type of biting do you think is going on? I mean, do you think it's just like this it's or is bit, it like a nipping kind of thing or no he's sending them to emergency rooms i mean so you it's... don't go there for bruises you go there for punctures okay that's when you go multiple emergency room visits yeah i read one he bit the arm and the leg do you like think he's, he's going go hard no? i don't know german shepherds aren't big like 
shakers. Yeah. But no, I don't I don't know. I don't know. But so they need to get a handle on it. So they 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 need to get the right people in there. And I'm trying to help dude right now. A hundred thousand because is nothing. I mean, we spend I think one point eight billion dollars a day on interest for the national debt. How about pick a hundred K down yeah. and we'll make a weekend out of it? Yeah. I like the the secret surgeon. Uh, what is it? Secret Service guys yeah. are awesome. You ever see that movie um, in the line of fire or something like that? Yeah. And bodyguard. Oh, no, yeah. that, was, that wasn't Secret yeah, the, Service. This was, that was with uh, Clint Eastwood. It was a good one. And secret Dogma. Service is weird though. They also like print the money or protect the money. Like they're they not all just protecting. It? Yeah. They, they have something to do. Secret Service has a lot to do with um, our money. They, um, they oversee the printing of money and they, they, they the have a reserve whole, or something or no. No, Secret Service has like multiple branches. They don't just do this protection thing. Maybe they have, they have a lot to do with our money. They like they make money out of like pulp essentially. Yeah. And so maybe those facilities that have all of the the money making stuff, maybe they're involved in that. Yeah, but I think they do deal with um, some type of uh, counterfeit too, or no? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Something all that like stuff. That. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, so is that enough help? I for mean, the White House. Okay, so I think what we're saying right this second is, hundred thousand. We'll go out there for three days. We'll fix the and dog. We'll fix the dog, and there won't we'll, be any more we'll, bugs. There won't be any more bites, right? Or will there be? I mean, that's a hard thing to say. If they don't do anything, I ever say the dog can bite somebody. Like I won't tell anybody, but like we'll get the dog pretty good, hundred grand. <laughs> we'll get ninety percent better, right? Ninety percent. Ninety percent. Ain't bad. So let's just say that they decide not to take our help or someone of they're not going to take this our caliber. Help. This caliber, I think they will. I think we'll get a call tomorrow. Personally, okay. but let's just say they let's just say they don't. Let's just say they keep doing what they're doing. Um, how many bites? Commander legitimate. Gone. How many bites legitimately are we going to see in the newspaper or whatever you want to call it? I, I this might be the last one. Can they got to get rid. They got to. They got to get rid of the dog because they're not going to fix it unless they're calling a handful of people, they're not fixing it. We will also do 50,000 if they want to get 50,000 for us, 50,000 for Caesar. We'll do that too, right? Joint venture. Oh, and Caesar wants to go. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No, okay, okay, sure. So I'm thinking 15. Just put this down as for the podcast that Eric said, 15. Thousand dollars? No, 15 bites or incidents that we're going to oh. read about more before it gets fixed. Okay. I'm going to say after this one being the 11th, I'm going to say they're going to do one more. A dozen. And then we might see an article that says, oh, he went to friends and family in Delaware. To Hunter, I, they, right? they can't just keep, yeah, to Hunter Biden, who's a uh, shout out to that old podcast. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Who is, uh, and that's what I think. That's, I think, the only They, they got to get rid of the dog eventually if it keeps biting people. Just yeah. can't keep doing this. It's a hostile work environment. Yeah, this dog would be put down, by the way. If it was any other person's yeah. dog in the United States. Yeah, probably. yeah, the dog's done. Yeah. No, I think you did a great job on the Biden story today because, Me? you know, yeah. I mean, okay. I thought you were going to go really hard in the paint and that was pretty soft, I thought. So, yeah. You know, I'm sure you Good. made somebody angry in the comments. Oh, we'll dude. We'll get to hear about it. Oh, next yeah, week. yeah, yeah, yeah. We made some uh, Biden haters super mad. Yeah, no, I think you're right. So, no, that was good. All right. So, Let's let's make an agreement that we won't do this again until the fifteenth bite. Oh yeah, we'll skip. Can we do that though? We'll skip twelve and thirteen and fourteen. What if he like mauls somebody? Uh, Just, I wish we could get more data. Mauls a child happening. or something. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. We'll we'll yeah. uh, we'll leave it up to the audience. How about that? That sounds fair. Um, I like that the White House is just like he's just you know they're just like their dogs just like biting like people they think are like minions you know like can just keep biting those unimportant people yeah like but the rest of society like could never get away with that i think um so i agree with you completely i was wondering whether or not we could jump into a voicemail or if you have anything else no, to I'm cover good. here so we got a voicemail and i'm just gonna let it kind of play if it works here oh yeah i remember this but, one um let me see if it starts playing but it's Something I don't think you guys will believe. Seven, eight, four, five, five, eight. Oh, that's where the bad dogs go. 
Every day I'm praying them. Every day I'm praying them. Yes. Every day I'm praying them. Every day I'm praying them. You guys hear that? I hope they hear that. We're going to have to listen to that. No, no, no. They hear it. Okay. Every day I'm praying them. It keeps going. It just goes on. That's fantastic. Okay, it's almost done. All right. So that was the first like pod song. Hmm. No. Someone. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. 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 So that's hard to beat. Well, here's my question. No offense ever to anyone who calls and sings on our voicemail hotline and plays a song. That's fine. I love it. Um, how old do you think that gentleman was? Twenty six. Okay, seemed a little older than that to me, hmm. but I could be wrong. And how old is that song? Every day I'm hustling. That's a great question. I'd Who say 15 that song? years ago. Oh, really? Okay, so that might have been be like wrong. in his era. Yeah. But props to that guy for deciding after a few drinks to oh, call Rick Ross. the pod. So probably not 15 years to call the pod cast and just start rapping every day I'm training them. Yeah. Oh, it was a debut of Rick Ross. So this is 10 years, 2000 recorded 2005. I was oh, pretty long close. Time ago, 18 yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Every day. I'm... So that might have been his generation of rap. My generation of rap is NWA. You're like late Too 80s, short. early 90s, right? Yeah. I mean, like high school, like, like I was listening to it before, like even the chronic came out, like oh. Too Short, like NWA. Um, I was sixth grade when the com chronic came DJ out. DJ Quick. Who remembers oh, DJ Quick course. out there, bro? Of course, from Compton. DJ Quick was from Compton. It was all West Coast. Yeah. Oakland. So, you, but you were a bit on the late 80s side of it, right? That's not really late. Well, NWA years. started in like 88. It was like 87. -ish. Yeah. And then, but they got real big in the early 90s. But, okay. Yeah. Um, but, but remember, Dre came out in 92 with the chronic. Yeah. So that they were already broken up and stuff. Yeah, that's that true. Time. So you're right. Late 80s. Yeah. So, but like a lot of the stuff that I like from the late 80s, I had to relearn, if that makes sense. So like I grew up in the Ghetto 90s. Boys. I grew up on like uh, cro like the Chronic original yeah. one, all the two short stuff, all the Tupac stuff. Tupac was a little bit later. Yeah, but, a little later. But so then all the like Run DMC and all this other stuff, I had to like go back Beastie Boys. I had to go back and like relearn it because I was too young. You know, I mean, your, yeah. your parents aren't trying to get you to listen to hardcore gangster rap at no. eight years old. Not the Ghetto Boys especially. <laughs> You remember the Ghetto short. Boys? Too short for that matter. Probably Ghetto not Boys great. were so hardcore. Yeah. It was I, awesome. I love, all Bill. I love all that. Yeah. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Oh, with I your... keep going. I, I just don't want to say RBL. I don't want to say um, Mac RBL Dre. Posse? Oh, wow. You're like whole West Coast, like Bay Area. You stuff. remember that? Oh, of course. RBL? Oh, of course. Oh, my God. I know all Dude, this Mac stuff. Dre, Mac Mall. Like Andre Nicotina and all these people. I don't know. That Brother is. Lynch. You guys, these people. Cypress are, Hill. That's, yeah, that's, that's a little bit popular. Later. That's a little bit later. But Cypress right. Hill was awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was the heyday. Now I feel like. I loved it. How old do we seem like we're like, oh, nowadays music sucks, right? That's yeah. bad, right? It, no, I, yeah, I don't listen it to it now. It does. It suck. Yeah. I had a, I had a funny that, thing. Doesn't seem Go that ahead. bad. Go Some ahead. beats like, oh, I had. I'm not going to say who dropped the dog off at our place today. I don't know if he cares. He has the like the biggest viral song on tiktok ever really yeah he dropped his dog off today i know i know that you were telling me about a guy yeah i just didn't know it was Bro, like that it's big on the TikTok. biggest song every single person if i said it right now would heard it he just dropped his dog off him and i he's cool is he's it cool almost dude. like at the what how do you say it? gangnam style Remember that, that was a song? global phenomenon this is a tiktok phenomenon i feel That's like different I feel like that that song was the first one to hit a billion. I could be wrong. Oh, on the internet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like so like YouTube Macarena was kind of like, like. Yeah, I don't think but YouTube that wasn't was going in, hard in that no, time. No, no, it wasn't. I know. I was a senior in high school. They taught us that in school. I think I think it originally came out because I was not a sophomore when you were a senior. Yeah. But I remember them like taking us out to the quad and teaching us the Macarena. How goofy. Come on, bro. Yeah. That's goofy. That's okay. Um. So anything else about every day I'm hustling about hip hop? Who knew I that have another one too? Would for talk of major West Coast uh, 80s hip hop, which is awesome. 
Yeah. There's a separate Did podcast we we're doing that is uh, just a Joel and Eric cover hip hop. So uh, make sure to subscribe you know to that one. RBL. RBL Posse? Yeah. Yes, of course. That's crazy. I know. I, I know all that. So remember N2 Deep? Do you remember that? Back yeah. to the hotel? Yeah. Rump Shaker. What was, what was that? Uh, Rex in Effect. DJ Quick. Oh, I, I know all of DJ Quick. I said, Quick I said is the that name. already. Yeah. There's some, there's some You're titles. You're pretty young for that, though. I'm surprised. Yeah, I am. There's some you... titles that I probably can't even say no. on here. Um, yeah, probably not. And there's not a lot of stuff you want to like share with your kids, I find. No, no. I sometimes put it on. Like I'm just feeling nostalgic. I'll put like NWA on and my kid, and then I'm like, I'm like, oh, what? Like, yeah, I can't do that. I remember being like 15 years old, and I was listening to the, um, yeah, I think it was 15. I was listening to the two short, the one where he retires, the Get in It album is like his 10th album. He said, and uh, there's a song with Eric Sermon in there, and he says some stuff in there that is pretty bad. And I've got um, a neighborhood kind of girl, you know, girl, not my girlfriend. And my mom's taking us to school, you know, before I had my driver's license. And he, this guy's just going off. And my mom's like, can you turn that off, please? I'm like, uh, okay. And it was like, it was bad. Yeah, so check bad. out that song if you guys want to hear. Um, so I got another one if you want to hear it. Yeah, voicemail. Okay. Just to be totally straightforward, I have not heard this. I have known right. nothing about what's going to happen here. So let's go ahead and play this thing and see what happens. Oh, yeah, I did read it. Hey, back then. Uh, what do you think would happen if a wolf mother and like a German shepherd muff mother were, were to switch litters, assuming the wolf mother didn't kill the litter, how sure. would the two puppy packs come up? And uh, Peter Kane dog training on is a guest, please. Thank you. That's a twofer right there. So here's my question, because I did I did see that right before we went on. Went on. I, I Does he mean... If the wolf was in the wild with the German, because I think that's an interesting question. I think he's just saying like switch the litters, right? I know, but are, are the German Shepherd puppies with the wolf mom in the wild? Um, I don't think so. They're. I think you just isolate them and oh, see what then, happens. Oh, then then nothing would happen. So the if it was a wolf, wolf, she mother... would love her little German Shepherd babies, but they'd probably be a little soft for, her, and she'd be like, "Why are you guys so soft?" And like chill and like and then the wolf the german shepherd mom would deal with the wolf puppies and they'd be like all aggro a little bit a little bit she and she'd be fine kids. yeah she'd be like my kids are crazy but it would be normal now an interesting question would be what if i guess in the wild the german shepherd puppies grew up i think they'd die do you think oh yeah i, I know they die they would. yeah what yeah. do you think about um is there any way a, a half German shepherd could make it in the wild with a wolf, a wolf, half German shepherd? Yes. You think so? The, yeah. What the, the, the wild's a tough place. It's going to make a little, it's going to make it a little smaller. Yeah. But there's all kinds of wolves. Like there's submissive wolves and they, a lot, most of them are submissive. But and there's also wolf packs though, right. That are also going to try to kill their pack probably. Right. Yeah. But you got the pack, right. A week, a week one can, can survive a little so bit. So you're saying just one, like just having one shepherd mixed in. Oh, like half shepherd. Or a couple. I don't yeah, well, I don't know. I think it'd be fine. I mean, that happens. And yeah. the dog, I was at the beach the other day and this bird just has one leg. He's just living life. Like yeah. I'm like, you were made with two legs. You think you'd die in the wild with only one, but like you see birds all the time, one leg, they're yeah. fine. Yeah. I listened to Marcus Aurelius on the hike up the hill here this yep, morning yep. and uh he was saying something about that about like you know you not saying it's like a gift but he's just saying like that's what nature presented to you so make the best i mean oh. that's basically what he's saying but yeah uh, i was like wow that's harsh it makes you feel grateful right for having everything yeah, yeah all your fingers and toes and stuff like yeah. that that's a good thing yeah um so i think it's, thank you for that comment whoever called yeah, that in yeah next time step up your uh Rap Rick game. Ross game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and wrap us the question, please. Yes, please, please. Uh, I wonder if that's going to start some type of like song trend. Uh, people like rap questions on or something. I just like that the guy did that. Just that decided was... that that was a good idea. But you know what would be more important is if he's like actually training them every day. Like oh. what if he was actually training the dog every day? Probably is. And he's like, he's listening head. to this podcast. Yeah, in his All head, day. he's like, every day I'm training them. And then he was thinking like, 
I'm going to call. I am doing this. And then he was, yeah, he's like, I'm going to just make a song because this is what I, this is what this I This is live. my life. Yeah. And yeah. That's true. Yeah. Maybe that, I think that probably is true. Yeah, no, I think you're right. So no, you're I thought those were fun. Um, we'll try to get to a couple each week. Um, in the description box, we will have the phone number. If you'd like to call and leave a voicemail for your chance of getting on the program. Uh, anything else on the voicemails? Otherwise, I think we should jump over to the breed of the week. All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, so I have two, but I don't mm. know if I want to go to. Wow, I'm getting pinged. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, that's funny. Breed okay. of the week. Breed of the week. Here we go. This is the most deep dive, comprehensive uh, dive into all breeds that you're ever going to see on the internet. Yeah, yeah. the the best one Analysis. one minute winging it you've ever seen. Um, so I've got two. And so I'm going to just, is it okay to do two? Yeah. Okay. So, um, pointers. You're going to just have a group. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it gets all specific and I'm like, what? He doesn't know anything about these guys. Come on. Let's go. Okay. So we're going to, the most common pointer would probably be the German short haired pointer. Then my question would be, are Weinreimers and Vishla's technically pointers? They're in the same group as pointers, but I don't know if they're a, called a pointer. I don't know. They're obviously very similar. So here's what I'll say about German short-haired pointers. And God, what are some other pointers? I think Vishla's and Weinreimers. Point, pointing dogs, sometimes yeah. called bird dogs, are a type of gun dog typically used in finding game. Okay, I'm with this so far. Um, gun dogs are traditionally divided into three classes, retrievers, flushing oh. dogs, and pointing breeds. Are we talking about mostly the pointing breed or yeah, you all are. of them? Yeah, pointers. That's your question. But I mean, pointing dogs are also retrievers? No. Okay. Maybe pointers are pointers. Okay. And there's a lot uh, in Europe. You know, they made a bunch. But German shredded pointers. Then we'll put Vishlas and um, 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 wine rammers in that group. So here's what I'm going to say. The pointing aspect of them, I don't think is like some big... Like if you were to say herding dogs... You, you shouldn't really put them in a home and they end up biting people's. That's true. They can, you can have some real problems. Pointing dogs like aren't disrupting your life because they're pointing at everything. Like they're not just always pointing. Now you'll see on the internet. I saw one the other day. This, this, this Vishla was, was pointing at a fly on a couch and it was pretty funny and cute, but it's is not it real like, or is that a joke? No, no, no. He was just like pointing at this fly. It was, he just had it in him, but I haven't seen that many pointers that just come onto my property and just start pointing. So it doesn't like affect their the owner's life, and it's like this horrible thing that your pointer is pointing all the time. Why does it so it says so? How do pointers and setters include the following breeds: English Gordon. These are both setters. Yeah. Irish Red, Irish White, I guess. Um, Irish Setter. Yeah. Are, what is the difference between a setter and a pointer? Do you even the, know the length of hair? Is but, that what it is? No, I don't know. They're they're a similar. I think one might be a little older. Like setters feel like I feel like they're like old school, like in in country of origin. It seems yeah. like setters are very English and Irish and Scottish, and pointers tend to come from Eastern Europe. Yeah, this is crazy what you're saying. Like the following breeds are also considered versatile hunting dogs, and it's like Ariege pointer. I don't know. And then there's like Bracco Italiano. Let me know if you've heard of any of these. Bracco do uh, a lot of foreign names, like you're saying. Uh, Brittany, French Spaniel, oh, yeah. German long the Spaniels, hair, rough haired yeah. pointer, German rough haired, German short hair, German wire hair. That's the one I saw today. I think it was German wire hair yeah. pointer. Um, but there's a bunch of them, but it looks like, oh, Weimaraner. Weimaraner? How do you say that? Yeah. Weimaraner. You say that real fast. Weimaraner. Um, okay. So there's a bunch of them. Yeah. I so pointers. Um, here's the thing with those three breeds that I've just said. They have separation anxiety, the worst three, and then pit bulls being four. I don't know why they got separation anxiety built into those dogs. They're also Velcro dogs. So Vishla, Vishla's wine rumors, German short hair pointers. They want to be on you all the time. Dobermans do too. They're not the only dog that wants to be on you. And they're the, I'm so, sorry, I'm not sorry dogs is what I call them. So they'll get up. If Prince gets up on a counter, I'm like, Prince, he doesn't, but I'm like, Prince, he'll be like, oh my God, I'm sorry. And then he may never do it again. Mm -hmm. A one-year-old German short-haired pointer is getting on the counter. You're gonna be like, "Get off!" And they're gonna be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry!" And then they're up there five you seconds later. Yeah, they don't really care. They have short hair, short memory, and they're huh? they're crazy. The only dog that ever has taken me out and hit my legs, 
and taken me out was a German trophy pointer. He was running around with Bosco and I'm at someone's house and they're just sprinting around this person's big yard. And I go to the lady and I go, Hey, now you got to be careful as these dogs come right Two dogs. And sometimes they're like run and then like move each other. And so I'm like, Hey, we, we got, you got to be careful as they come in. And then the dog hit me and just took my legs out. And I landed right on my stomach. Ass over elbows or what? I mean, did you just on my stomach? However, okay. Boom. And then I just went boom and treats flew everywhere. Like it was super like a sack of potatoes. Just yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. That sounds humiliating. It's like 120 pounds of dog hit me at 20 miles an hour Yeah. because I'm, I'm counting both dogs together. Like I don't think Prince hit, Bosco hit me, but. I, I saw I saw a short on YouTube, I think it was, and it was a Malinois. I think it was a Malinois, and it just goes full bore at somebody and just blasts them. Like yeah. Yeah. I think it was like a bite me as a biting uh example or something like that, or a demonstration. And it, it looked like a missile just <laughs> smashing this guy. It was crazy. Yeah. I yeah. can only imagine. And then I also heard Brian Callen talking about getting bit with the I heard thing, that. and he was saying like the force is like unbelievable. Yeah. We need to have someone on who can talk about that stuff. Like I, I don't understand police dog stuff. Are they, are those people getting sent to the um, emergency room be, with torn up arms every time? Um, I, I don't know how they don't. Can I, can I have a popular unpopular opinion here? Yeah. So I don't know if the police are better or worse than they were growing up. Right. But like, Hmm. I ha if I were to like, there's a lot of different elements in my, in my opinion, just off the top of my head with police work. There's like interacting with the public, de-escalating yes. situations. Yes. Very big. There's a physical aspect of being able to control uh, violent, aggressive people, you know? Yeah. Right. There's all these things. And then there's also, um, I, I also look at kind of the ability to shoot and shoot under pressure. Okay. Because they have, they carry a gun. If you carry a gun, you should know how to operate, right? So, I don't always think they are the greatest uh, marksmen. And the reason I say this, I'm not hating. I know there's probably some that are really good, but I've heard from some people that I know that they don't even get an opportunity to like they don't get ammo. Like that, they, they don't they're not given ammo to practice because oh, there's no right. budget for it. Right. But so I start to think of the way, and also I think when I was a kid, like I felt like these uh, these police officers were old and wise and stuff but now i look at a police officer and i'm like this kid's 27 years old you know i, I don't okay. it doesn't have the same thing so then as i relate it back to dogs of course is i'm thinking of with that amount of training kind of across the board and i'm thinking like now we're gonna have a dog that's a pretty gnarly dog just ran you know just run amok on somebody yeah. and it is is that um is he gonna be like hey stop right and it's just gonna just jump off or is it just, is it going to ignore him and just bite the hell out of All those up? things. All of it? All of it. That doesn't sound These that good. These dogs make mistakes. These dogs sometimes don't let go. Uh, I I know a cop and he was like, he, what, he told me this story about this dog like getting caught somewhere and thrashing around and then cutting himself. Like, like yeah, it's a dog. Like these things are not trained perfectly. It's not they, a robot. They send these dogs to places to get trained and they get them there's not a perfect system for when these dogs are done and they retire where do they go like there's no perfect systems out there in the world and certainly police dog training is not a perfect system either yeah. they need to send them to that uh standard uh american standard canine get that get the police dogs trained up properly yeah maybe yeah, yeah. so okay so anyway so you think that a lot can go wrong on the dog training front for a police dog how would it not you're dealing with the human being aspect of it you're dealing with um a dog who isn't perfect you're dealing with a handler who isn't perfect you're dealing with a criminal who is doing crazy things there's there's th there's there's risk to the dog there's risk to the person um i have a funny thought on this too is sometimes from afar you can look at a situation and go Let's just picture, for example, that somebody's committing a crime, a dog, a canine unit's there, and this dog knows that it's a, it's the perpetrator, and it goes after it, and it just tears him a new one, right? Okay. And then, you know, everyone does the postmortem. They look back like, hey, what happened? What went wrong? And then maybe, like, they're going, well, 
it kind of worked as we wanted it to. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you know for sure that that wasn't like not totally? Out? I mean, ultimately, think about how protective Prince would be with you. That like, if Prince thought your life was in danger and went at somebody yeah. and just went way too far, you're kind of like he's still kind of, you know, what do you call it? Intolerance in what's the term you use? I don't know. It's like he's still like kind of um like threshold or I don't know what you call it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's still kind of within criteria. Yeah, within criteria. That's exactly right. Right. You know what I mean? No. So like, how do we know they don't want the dog to tear him a new one? Well, more more the protection aspect. Right? There's, there's I don't think it is. A, it's not a protection aspect. I don't know a lot about police work. We're gonna get someone on who might. Um, it's 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 a learned behavior. But I mean, they are a team, a, right? I mean, yeah, so, yeah. But the, I don't. I mean, it's go get that guy's arm, and yeah. they they know who the guy is. It's the guy acting crazy over there. It's the guy in that car. It's who we're all surrounding. Go get him. Isn't it weird though? How like that's a and get it and bite his arm. Don't bite his neck. It's an interesting thing about dogs though, because if you think about dogs, like with humans, if generally speaking, if you're a, a criminal and you're having a standoff with the cop, like a lot of times, if you're very ornery with the cops, like you'll just be like, Hey, screw you, buddy. I don't care what you think. Right. But when that dog comes out, yeah, people are singing a different tune. If, unless they're on like math. Yeah. I, I think, think they're singing a different things. tune yeah. still though. Like, yeah. like remember on that movie or that show cops, like they had police dogs all the time. People getting ripped up. Yeah. Fighting back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't want to be on the receiving end of any of these. Like I've been bit by a golden retriever, man, and it didn't feel good. Like, I don't want to get bit, bit by a Malinois. No. And on the ground. What percentage, oh. if you had to break down like the distribution of breeds by, for police, would you, I mean, cause there has to be a fair number of German shepherds too, right? I think they're phased out. There it used to be like Dobermans back in the day. I, I read a book years ago. I just go to Barnes and Noble when I first started the business and I just look at the dog training books. There was a book on American Bulldogs being police dogs. This this the guy who wrote the book was like American Bulldogs are the best police dogs in the world. He wrote a whole book on it. It was like a red book, I remember. Um I think it's it's almost all Malinois, I think. But probably German Shepherds mixed in there. Different police forces get their dogs from different companies. You know, American bulldog, they don't look that tall. They're not that tall, are they? No, they're not that tall, yeah. but they're bigger than a Malinois. Those German the problem is you don't want you. I don't you. You don't want to kill the guy. Yeah. That's where it's, dogs will rip people up. Are you I know you don't get into the trick stuff that much or you just don't have much of an interest in that. But I mean, yeah. are you impressed with a lot of those like Malinois owners that have the dog that goes under their legs and does all the like? No, no, you don't care really. Would you want Prince to do that or not really? Or did you have, are you too busy? Well, would I want him to if I could snap my fingers and have it? That'd be cool. Yeah. But it's, it, like it's a party it's, trick. Yeah, it's like a party. It's the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Shaping behavior with clickers and treats and um um successive approximations towards the final behavior is takes time but it's it's not rocket science and i don't mean to act like it's nothing people it's uh it's fine there's there's trainers out there who do it mm. on youtube emily laurelham right she's like the trick master yeah i think i think i remember you talking about her yeah um i have a on a separate topic i have an interesting idea and I'm going to just throw it out there for the podcast. Yeah. Let me know what you think of this. Okay. Yeah. I want to have a couple of our hard, like our hardcore podcast folks write in the comments, like 100, if they think they'll be around at podcast number 100. What do you think of that? Oh. Like go back. We can go back, back when we'll go back in 2023, we were at, well, well that would only be what, a year? That's five times what we've already done. I think there'll be some soldiers that are like still, yeah, like um, the hardcores will still be there. All right, write one hundred if you think you're you're you can you're <laughs> up for eighty more podcasts. Yeah. I hope they are. I think we'll only have four to five more episodes on Joe Biden in that time. Yeah, I agree. As far as dog biting, you know. Yep. Okay. So well, you're you're bought into that. Um, Read of the week. You had two. Oh, you want to go more? Okay. Well, if you want, did I? If you want to make this whole thing about dogs, then let's just go ahead. All right. Uh, how about Pharaoh Hounds? Have you ever heard of that dog? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't need, have I trained one? A lot of dogs look like feral hound. Feral Whoa, hounds. dude. They look crazy. They're cool. Whoosh. Okay, that's kind of a wild looking one. Try to find another one. I shouldn't. I feel like a lot. They're like a medium dog. They're short hair. That one looks crazy. Oh yeah, too. that that one does look crazy. They all look crazy. I don't know if I've ones. ever trained one of those. No, I Egyptian, mean, you would know. Oh, Egyptian, huge ears, right? Yeah, Egyptian dog. Wow, that looks really interesting. I don't know a lot about them. No, did I kind of stump you a bit? Yeah, but I, I mean, I've heard of them. They seem to be. I mean, I don't know. I wonder how old they are. Are they actually like? 4,000 years old, or did they just name him a pharaoh hound is because they're Maltese from Egypt? Breed? What does that mean? Does I that know. mean like maybe Malt Maltese or then Malta, official Republic oh. of Malta? Oh, that makes sense. Thank the Lord for uh, Wikipedia here. Um, you traditionally used for rabbit hunting in the rocky terrain of the islands, but Maltese name means rabbit dog. Sorry, rabbit dog, <laughs> not rabid dog. Um, interesting. All so, right. feral no, hounds. You're over it. Yeah, that's. Fine. I don't know anything about them. That's fine. Just there's Joel again, just not making up stories when he doesn't know it. Really hurts the podcast, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, apologies. Yeah. So, you have any apologies? I tried to find one by watching last week's podcast. I crapped all over Eugene, Oregon again. I can do that. I think I crapped on him last week. I crapped on people that moved to other states. And uh, I thought about that. California, New York. People commented on that in the last one, and they're just like, "Yeah, these people are horrible," and they are. But you know what? It's funny. I would do it if I felt like I had to do it. You got to do what's best for your family. And if yeah. you're from San Francisco and you want to move to Idaho, um, do it. But understand, you're you better vote vote differently. Here's the here's my issue. You it's, better. It's a bit of a double standard, right? Like. Coming from California, and I mean, we we hate to admit it, but we are we are Californians. Uh, oh yeah, you, you know you're for sure you're for sure it's beautiful now. here. Um, we have so many people that come from all over the United States to come here. We're not like, hey, what are you doing here? You can't be here. Why are you yeah. from Idaho? You're not allowed to be here. I've said that before. What's the deal? Why did why is it that like it's okay to come to California, but you can't leave California and go somewhere else? That's a good point. What is the difference? There's there's a difference. There's got to be a difference. I think we're not intolerant to people showing up from a different state. Also, one person moving here or a thousand doesn't change the whole place. Yeah, but we have no, no. Do you what I just said? Does it change? The you move to I mean, freaking. I mean, Cord Lane's probably big at this point, but you move to some of these. These are small towns. These are small states. Yeah. That they, that freaking thousands of people are moving to it changes everything yeah the they person, don't change anything here they said durango right that was the yeah the durango, commenter colorado. said durango colorado yeah. which i've been through and i was there um in december and uh that seemed like a fairly small town as well but at the same time like i i was under the, and i know the germans and the europeans are just glazing over at this point but i thought we were still part of the same country but that, that might not be true that's a good point. But like maybe we should just start rocking state flags and not American flags in this how, case. I get so annoyed with people who um they move to the suburbs and then they put their like stupid college flag up. College flag? Who does that? Our neighbors put I actually like our neighbors. They're probably watching this. I know. But they put their USC flag up there and then it's like well, USC at private school. I mean and, good for and them. people do it all the time and it's I don't know. I just what annoys me the most and has always annoyed me the most, and it's actually talked about like a few years ago, talked about a little more on social media and new, but I, it's annoyed me for years is when people move. So Boston people would always come here and then they'd have their giant Red Sox sticker on their car with their California plates. And I'm like, Patriots, Patriots, it's Boston people. It's like religion. Sports is like religion to those people. Yeah. Hey, don't move from your horrible little Boston town to San Diego, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, and keep your Boston freaking allegiance? How about you try to acclimate a little bit? It's pretty slim pickings for people coming out to San Diego. Though. Yeah, to, to have a team. I get it. Root like, for the Padres, though. You you live here now. 
No, they want the Red Sox in their. Uh... Yeah, they fill up Petco. Yeah, I it, think you're just embarrassed so because there's lame. more visiting people at a San Diego stadium than there are home people. It just no, it's it's Boston people mainly that yeah. bother me. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I went to a Dolphins game against the Chargers years ago, and it seemed like there was more Dolphins fans than there were. Chargers. Yeah, the, it happens a lot. I mean, yeah, uh, I think we just don't have a very strong. No, we don't. But it's it's culture. bothering me. I've lived a lot of places, and I've seen this. How about Oregon? Oregon doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of teams, do they? They have the Oregon Ducks and all the Oregon fans. That's their pro team. They love the Ducks. All my friends love the Ducks. The I don't Oregon care because Ducks. I don't live in Eugene anymore. The University of Oregon Ducks. That's not pro. That's college. I know, but it's their pro team. Oh, okay. Okay. But they don't. They have the Trailblazers. Trailblazers. What else do they have? That's it. They don't have anything else? No. No, they don't have an ice hockey team or anything like that? Portland? No, they have a now they have a, a soccer team like MLS. I think it's the Portland Soccers or maybe that's San Diego. I don't know. San Diego Soccers. I don't live in Portland. I well, I know you've or you've, Oregon. You've uh, you've uh, cast that away. So I think that for the apology for this episode, I'd like to apologize for the pointer segment because I feel like we spent way too much time talking about the pointers. Like really, we kind of cheated people out of the breed of the week, which is really oh. just kind of more throwaway. People are used to such a great breed of the week that the, the, this one was very disappointing. Yeah. So um, I would like to remind everybody that if they'd like to support the podcast, they should hit the subscribe button. Okay. Yeah. About three quarters of the people that are watching this are subscribers. But, you know, figured, hey, you want to help us out a little bit. We're not asking you to buy merch every week. Um, so if, you know, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome. Link is in the, uh, description yep. by the way, but just figured throw all that out. And then I did have a, um, comment from somebody that was asking about how, how they can, they want to like talk to you. They're like, I want to, how do I talk to you? I want to have a zoom call. I want to do whatever. How do they not know that they can do this? Cause this we, point. I don't know. Beckman's dog training.com. You can sign up for a private session, a feisty session, a zoom session, or a phone session. With me at Beckman's dog training.com under programs. You click and you talk to me. This is to help 20th. you with your dog. You, I mean, if you just want to talk, we can talk too, but you got to pay for it. So, yeah. Uh, the t- for, and you'll be like fully clothed and stuff, right? And these totally appropriate, right? Usually. Okay. So, 21st podcast. I don't think you've ever said Beckman, like Beckman dog training dog training doc. com. Like you never website. even noted like that you have a website. Yeah. Like you make people go out and find you if they if they're interested, huh? Oh, totally. Um, that's pretty funny. Um, okay. No, that's cool. So what else you got on the agenda for today? Comments. You want to get into some comments? Yeah. We could spend years on these comments. Uh, do you have any that you wanted to kick off or do you want me to No, you've got most of them? Okay, I've got a ton of them. Um, this one is a bit interesting, and so I feel like this might just take us down the rabbit hole, but under duress says this, and I'd love to hear the commenters, oh, yeah. what they think about this. Uh, hey, Joel, I've been a supporter and advocate of your channel for a good number of years and have been very glad to see how popular the channel has grown. You're nearly half a million subs. He is correct about that. What are you like, 457? Yeah. Um, you provide the best dog training content I've ever seen, and you are doing notable work. Sorry, noble work. Uh, actually helping people. Thanks. I wanted to inform you that YouTube is suppressing your channel in the search algorithm he gets a bit into how that's accomplished um but as popular as your channel has become you should be in the top five results especially when quoting your channel near or channel name in the search bar uh your channel would and should be much more popular than it currently is yeah why get you know i i didn't um trash biden today because i want youtube to how, not to, hurt you to not hurt me on what, what in the called? algorithm. Throttle you or something? They throttle you with the algorithm? Yeah, I don't want to get throttled. So I decide, no, that's not true. Um, yeah, I don't know. How do you ever know? No one knows whether YouTube's throttling you or why. You know, Jocko, the Jocko podcast? Yeah. He said that, he, or they said that he was getting throttled or, you know, whatever they call it. I think it. it's called throttled. Yeah, where they're just... Wait, throttled would be going fast. I would think so. I guess the throttle can go either okay, way like good. it's like a dirt bike throttle or something who knows but um but they they said that they had people because they're like you know people want to ban people he's like well i've got people 
people that work at those places too. And they reached out and said, Hey, there's something fishy going on. Mm, and this was for a period of time, but they could see like the, per, the amount of not just trajectory, but just the total number of views. And then it just started going down or whatever. Uh, but I would say that regardless of whether that's true or not, you can't keep a good man down. You know, the algorithm can, if it wants to true, but even, even with the growth, it's still people would, kill to have this type of uh following and the type of growth in the overall subscribers is still going big and um yeah. so i think that's like a something to keep in mind um you know, yeah i don't know and then one thing i would say too about the one thing people might not know is this podcast is also available on spotify it's available on apple Podcasts, right and then every other basic popular podcast yeah. app and i've gotten the numbers for that and we are definitely not being throttled on that because Good. we're crushing it every week. More and more people are listening through that method. So I don't know how they're hearing about it, but yeah, pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad the podcast is doing well. It's rocking and rolling. Uh, are you going to give another comment or do you want me to jump in? Maybe I'll just read a random one. Go ahead. Hopefully it's not horrible. Just, yeah. Just no, literally I'm reading a random one. Okay, go ahead. Guys, you have to keep bringing Prince to the podcast. He is just the best. And his level of attention for Joel is so great to see because we bought, brought Prince last week to the podcast. Yeah. Owning Dobermans, I get it. As Joel said, they always want to be with you. Great episode. I'm going to heart that one. I, so she wants Prince because it's a lady. I can see Trisha, Trisha Lebanon 4437. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, the issue with him is if he's if he shows up here, the chances of us getting some Mexican food after this is goes down. That's the problem. Yes, and I've dealt with this problem for so many years about going to clients' houses or podcasts. Basically, anytime you put your dog in the car, yeah, there are issues. That's the that's the problem. I've dealt with this for so many years with Bosco. I mean. I'd have to leave my car on if I stop somewhere. But He's, you do. Yeah. Yeah. But like, what if your car gets stolen with your dog in it? That's a bad look for you. My dog, if someone got in my car, my dogs would just probably sit in the back and be like, what is going on? I also messed up about dogs being stolen because I would have, I would often go to a client's house. I'd take their dog. I'd have the owner of the dog at their house, go get my dog out of the car. So see what I set up there? What did I do wrong there, Eric? Yeah. Do you understand the situation? I would go to a client's house, usually with Bosco. I used to take my dog and I used to go to tons of people's houses. I would use him as a dog passing another dog, let's say for their dog leash reactivity. Mm -hmm. I would have, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I would have their dog I and have the owner go get Bosco. I'd have his leash already on. I'd say, open that back door and then bring my dog out of the car. And then I would work the dog because I'm never going to get another chance for that dog to see my dog. So I do it right. And I realized about halfway through, maybe a year into it, two years into it, a month into it, I'm messing something up here. What did I mess up? That um, everyone's new to the situation. Is that right? That, that my dog was conditioned to let random people take him out of the car. That's what I conditioned in my dog. Oh. So about well, if, if ever, anyone ever wanted to steal my dog, all they had to do was open their door and take my dog. Now, was Bosco or Prince smart enough to go, no, my dad's not around. I'm not at a client's house. I'm in a shopping center. You're a random guy. Maybe. I wonder if I could steal him. Well, you would talk to him and you know his name. A, uh, a person wouldn't know his name. I'm just saying it always struck me. I, I realized about halfway through doing this that I'm not helping my dog not get stolen. If but, someone wanted to steal him out of a car because I had, he had rehearsed letting random people take him out of the car. But you got to take the good with the bad, right? Yeah. I mean, it was his job and we needed to do that. But it always struck me, you know? Yeah. No, that's. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think about how like fast time goes by, like how he used like you know i remember going and seeing bosco in the uh in the back 
in, yeah. the, in the back of this place. And oh, I was like, yeah. and I was like, whoa, like dog's gonna bite my head off. And then he was nice. But yeah. And then now like Prince is four ish, five ish. Yeah. Almost yeah. five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think about all this. I'm like, just somebody made a comment uh, in the comments, of course, it's a place to do the comments as they said, like, wow, I can't believe it. 20 podcasts completed already. Time flies. I'm thinking time does fly. Yeah. 20 podcasts is crazy. But I guess when you do it every week, uh, it picks up pretty quick, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Do you ever feel like your life is just flying by or no? Uh, Um, yeah, I'm going to be 50 in three years. That's insane. That's so old, but I don't like, I'm looking at myself right now. I like, I don't feel like I look 50. You look like you're 47, man. Do I? No, I'm kidding. I think I look it's hard pretty to say. good. Yeah, I mean you're a bit weathered, but I you, am. You it's know, like all look, the sun, I guess. Like like these lines here. When people get upset. They're like, "Don't call him weathered." You have a yeah, whole, they're like, gonna get mad at you. A whole contingent of like someone commented on my flexing last week. Yeah, they were right about that. They go, "Oh, Joel's flexing, bro. I'm gonna keep flexing because I'm working out." Yeah, that's fantastic. People like my uh, advice to your son about working out too. They yeah. thought it was sound advice, which I wouldn't give the advice if it wasn't sound, but hopefully your son takes it to heart and starts cranking out those pushups every other day. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Hey, I've got a comment, which I thought was really good. And as soon as I start reading it, you'll know which one it was. Okay. Um, but I think it's really good. So it's from Jules it says, uh, and I, I might have to synopse it or whatever you want to call it, summarize it a bit. Uh, so I haven't heard this one yet, but I do consider myself very much a part of the pod. Uh, I'm just going to come out, uh, I'm going to out myself as an animal activist Oh yeah, because it's a theme on the pod, uh, basically that we trash animal, <laughs> trash <laughs> them because they deserve to be trashed yeah. constantly, but you don't want to apologize for that. Do you? No. Okay. Uh, I was always an animal person growing up much like Joel. I know a lot about wild animals from watching everything out there and reading books. I have been a professional animal activist, which means getting paid for creating marketing campaigns against captive bears in Eastern Europe. Wow. Have I worked with raging vegans? Yes. Are they annoying? Also, yes. But these were highly educated people. They knew their stuff. She says shit, but um, but just because they're highly educated doesn't necessarily mean they know their stuff. To answer the question about Do we know how gnarly the wild gets? Yes, we do. Have I seen it? Yes. Uh, Well, on TV mostly. Because of my work, I've seen more than most people can handle generally. And I am talking about dogs getting skinned alive. That's not too good to hear. So yes, we know what uh, people do to animals. We also know what the wild is like. No educated animal animal rights activist will ever tell you to release insert captive animal into the wild. That's insane. However, we do want to phase them out, which means let them live and die in captivity and don't get new ones. I might rub a lot of people on here the wrong way, but I felt called out when Joel said these people don't have kids, which I don't laugh out loud, which actually is funny that she also doesn't have kids, but what what say yeah. you, my friend? Yeah, I mean, it's I love that she commented. I commented back and said, thank you so much. Like, I'm not going to sit here. And I asked, I think, for people to comment and tell me, do the animal rights folks actually know what the wild is like? Mm-hmm. She said, yes, we do. Great. Then she proved my point. She's like, I felt called out when I, when when you said they don't have kids. And then she's like, but I don't. So can the animal rights folks? And I love it. She's like being honest writing campaigns for releasing bears like she's very she's in it i also agree that they're they're some very smart people i'm i'm very smart about dog training because i'm passionate about dog training they're very smart about about animal rights because they're passionate about animal rights for the most part um but yeah i no, i'm just glad someone i'm glad that she's like she seems fairly reasonable she's like a part of the pod and she's an animal rights person yeah, that's I a, love that. That's something I didn't think we'd say. So that's pretty no. good. What, like, is there a framework we can think about here? Why do people hate me so much for working at SeaWorld, even though I left SeaWorld? People in the Who comments are like, <laughs> okay. bro, you should like go to to my other, it's like when, when my videos go to random places, they're like, they're like, you're they they they're like, you worked at SeaWorld, and then they're just like so angry in the comments. 
Like Who I like SeaWorld. You well, you you just read the pods comments. Yeah, you, you don't mean get like to the a, normal videos. Yeah, it's an always normal videos. It's yeah. not the pod ever. It's normal videos, and there's so many. Like I left SeaWorld. Yeah, but I even left. if you didn't leave. Well, that's a whole different story. I, I see why they're mad about it. But the fact that I left, don't you think Let me ask people you a would be a little more? Yeah. I've got two dog trainers and I want to tell my friends about them, right? One of them is a dog trainer. One of them is a dog trainer that also trained killer whales. There you go. In SeaWorld. At who, SeaWorld who's better at their Florida. job? And, well, no. You know, who would you be more impressed with? I know. Who's better at their job? Yeah. But even Forget still, being impressed with. But but then who I who understands more about shaping behavior using positive reinforcement. But I go, I go the killer he was whale the guy riding on the back and doing all that stuff, getting thrown up in the air, like because they need to visualize who because you can work at Sea World, be like, yeah, I worked in the gift shop. Oh, you know well, what I mean? Yeah. Like, how about the guy shaping behavior at the highest level possible, understanding animal behavior because you're you'll die if you don't understanding social dynamics between animals and how to in real time change the plan and change doing something including training and shaping of behavior because the dynamics between three animals in the back pools changed everything how about that guy understanding um how to train your dog yeah it's um, like how does i don't mean to toot my own go? horn it's like night and day how does your saying go i don't know about the killer whales it's like, oh, if, if if you can train killer whales, dogs are a breeze. That was that the true? tagline for many years. Yeah, it's mostly true. Yeah, I would I mean, say there's killer whale trainers who can't train dogs, but uh, you know. But you're one that. But can't. I started training dogs, so who do you want? Yeah, um, it's not even close. Can we get into this framework thing? I want to get in this, tease this out, just on your thought. So, sh so what she's saying is. It sounds like she lives or whatever in yeah Eastern Europe yeah. and uh, sounds hey, like animal rights activists from Europe. I don't I don't I believe don't, it. I don't believe it. Yeah. So there's imagine there's there's some type of dogs. Let's just say she's from Romania. I'm not saying she is. I Great. have no clue. Romania. She's in Romania and they've got bears and maybe the bears are in, in the a zoo. zoo. Yeah. But maybe it's circus. not in the zoo. Maybe it's circus. Maybe it's something else. Like, and I it probably has to go on a country by country basis because generally there's that you know element of uh, sovereignty. But like, let's just say Romania. Like, do you have any thoughts on like a bear? Let's say I don't know if it's a black bear. Bears are horrible in captivity. So what's it? What's an example of an she acceptable place them. where a bear could be in captivity? It's a great question. That's a great question. Um, when they're like giving never. at the wild animal park. Which is basically like a zoo, but a, a huge big zoo. zoo. Okay. They need bears need room. They need space. They need to walk. They need to wander. That's what they need. Bears, elephants. What type of enclosure size do you want to see for these bears? For one bear, according I mean, to USDA, by the way, it's like six by six, six by six feet, or six by six miles feet. Okay. The American, the the you, you the Department of Agriculture basically has rules on this, and it's like six, six by eight. Like it's it's way smaller than you would think. And I agree that should be changed. Uh, the law. That's a but bit. A bear, a, a one bear. I'd say he needs um, to be moderately happy. Um, four acres. At, at least, right? Yeah, to be like somewhat happy. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. I mean how. Do you, do you think a bear needs what they need in the wild? Do you know why they they need that in the wild? Or do you, do you know why a wolf pack needs 10 square miles? Because they need the food within that 10 square miles. They don't need it because they just love having it. They need like the human, amount of right? resources within that area. So if you provide their food, you can shrink that area where the bear is still happy. You want to know the worm problem with bears? I saw a video. I'm not even, I couldn't even look at it. He had worms coming out of him. These wild bears, they have horrible worm problems. Is that always the case or is this an unhealthy Apparently area? bears are very wormy. They have horrible tapeworms and horrible worms inside of them. Um, Do you know bears what trichinosis have no worms. Or whatever it's worms. called? Trichinosis? I've heard of it. It's like a, it's some type of bacteria, virus, something like that. But it's basically one of those you need to cook bear at 160 degrees or you're yeah. going to get sick. They're very dirty. Very they... similar to pigs, I think, in that. Yeah, uh, pork. Yeah. So so 
the bit the that's why bears have room now animal rights activists no room is enough room it's a cap four four acres isn't enough it's all the wild it's the wild but they need to take some things into consideration which i think some of them are moderately like accepting of that like and some the captivity is captivity and it doesn't matter right it's a prison now i'd argue that many of those same people and i would ask this lady if she was down for um uh, lockdowns two years ago that that comment didn't go over well on podcast number three really yeah someone got very upset oh by that. someone yeah they were i'm just asking the question i mean you're all about the wild but you're down to stay in your house for as long as the government tells you to it seems a bit odd to me yeah how I and i'm telling you there's people who would have just stayed like in their house like as long as the government says and then they're was, like let the animals free and i'm like yeah but the animals are gonna most of them are gonna die horrible deaths um but they're like kept but you stay in your house but let them free i i was i'm just asking i was gonna say the name of what we're talking about from 2020 right but i don't want to say it because i don't want it to like the algorithm yeah i don't want to get hit by the algorithm like the last comment was saying so but there was this thing that happened it was like a more or less an illness that happened in 2020 some people might remember this oh yeah um and so which created these things um and and i noticed like i'm so out of the loop that i'll like every every now and then some of be like oh i had i have this oh and yeah I'll be like oh yeah and then i'll see people like wearing a uh, mask at walmart and i'll be like oh there must be something i have no idea no idea i have no idea no. I'm like the last to know there could be the gnarliest thing. And I would be like, Oh, Oh, but I also don't, I mean, I, if, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have known about the, uh, Biden bite thing either. Oh yeah. I don't. Yeah. You're stuck in this office. Well, working. yeah, not only am I working, but I also, when I am not working, I really make an effort to do things that make my life better. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um, digging deep into politics and stuff like that. It's, tends to make me angry i have a i have another question i i like that lady i i she's responding so i'm gonna ask her questions how how do you, how do they feel about the um the jab can i say that and it being like tested on like ten thousand beagles or something and then like dying is it a beagles when did this happen yeah it was it was or any you can't say that word man you're 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 messing up the algorithm here oh, my friend oh my god okay but so it sounds like you are not that big of a fan of animal captivity. Like, but I think you would argue that there is, there's some like, like there's some value in a zoo. Like maybe there's not a zoo in every city, but there should be like, or am I wrong? Like I think about coming from as a kid, San Diego zoo, you later realize like San Diego zoo is actually a really good zoo. And then they have the wild animal park, which is like a breeding ground. And then it's also a zoo, but it has way more room and it's super cool. Yeah. So then, so I think we're a bit spoiled because of the size and number of animals. Right. We don't see traveling circuses with bears in cages, like maybe, you know, parts of the world still see. So what's the, what allows it to be okay? Is it the teaching that allows it to be okay? This is very complex. I don't think the teaching, that's a big argument for animals in captivity. It's like SeaWorld too, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like the teach. There's so many aspects to it. There's these animals are, what's the word? They're um, they're um, like representatives of the wild and they teach kids to love them. And that's fine. And the, you know, the, the animals need proper vet care in captivity, yes. I just think it's a very slippery slope is the main thing for me is like the set them all free. Okay. They're all free tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Animal rights guys. They're all free. Okay. What do they do with their time now? Do you think they move on to um, raise their kids better or to um, work better? No, they move on. So in Europe right now, you mean um, the animal rights activists go after something else? They're, they're just going to move on. And I'm going to tell you what they're going to move on to. So in Europe right now, I believe there's, it's like chimps are getting um, like almost like um, citizenship or they're getting some sort of like, like it's something they're getting, they're getting, um, yeah, they're becoming like, they're getting the same rights as a human. So they're just going to move on. And then after chimps, then they'll come to America. Then chimps will get it. Then they'll just move on until animals and people are, are the exact same, which is what animal rights believes that we're at all the their same. core that yes, that, that we're all 
but you're not doing that we're all of equal value and that's my problem with it because they will they will simply so i'm down for the fight i'm down for the fight a little bit because i know where they're going i know where they want to go with this okay but so like sea world is still open correct yes do they have killer whales there yeah but the breeding program is done no more killer whales so when the ones pass away there's no more whales and the show has totally changed SeaWorld caved so there's no like joel riding on the back of a no people riding on whales yes and that's been a long time what about so... launching them no no that's riding stuff. on the back yeah that's that's water work yeah. okay no water work okay um so is this a legitimate reason to the animal rights activists like the reason we have them in um large pools i don't know if you can call it a pool or whatever it is right it's kind of a pool that you it's a pool in. okay yeah a large pool like is it because like we want to sell a lot of beer like for anheuser-busch is that a good enough reason or not really anheuser-busch doesn't own them anymore um but they did right yeah okay. yeah so what's the reason money yeah so that's not a good enough reason to keep the animals is just like have a oh, museum part sell sell beer no no. I, got, I got like a brewmaster degree at uh Let's see what, you know yeah, what i'm yeah. talking about yeah 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 they had like a full-on anheuser bush like why is and it was pretty surprising like actually i guess like those loggers which i guess they call it like loggers they actually have the lighter the beer like actually the harder it is to make it really well because if it's a very thick like stout beer it hides a lot of imperfections but i think yeah. a lot of brewers would say that like Anheuser Busch is actually very good at what they do. The ability to make whatever, hundreds yeah, it's a millions of beers, and they taste exactly the same thing wherever. Yeah, it's are. like McDonald's or Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. Um. Also, to that store, we used to get um cases of beer every month. Oh, yeah, like and a we, bonus. Yeah, yeah. You just cook, pull up, and they'd have just just giant like uh, like a building size cases, and they just give it to the employees. And August Bush, the third. He started running the parks. He was really old and he would come through and he was like, he was a great man, that guy. Really? Did yeah. you ever meet him in person? No, he was a good manager though. You, I learned a lot. Like you talked about your managers. Mm -hmm. He basically gave the beer side to his son and he said, I'm going to be on the park side. And this was when I was in Orlando and Orlando was the biggest money-making park. So he was there a lot, almost every weekend. He'd walk through and he'd have like 15 people around him. And you could just tell, like I'm watching right now, Succession on HBO, which mm -hmm. is a awesome show. I've heard about it. The head of that household owns a big media company. No, what he's just this alpha male old guy, business guy, and everyone's scared of him. And that's how August Bush was. Mm -hmm. But that's how you get stuff done, dude. Like the managers would walk Through around and they were violence. terrified of him. So violence and, and he'd go violence. up to the trail person and the trainer uh, like me and he'd go hey how are how are you it's it's great and he'd be nice to me and then he and i saw my managers who were like these alpha guys like that had it like terrified of this guy and i loved it that's fantastic and then he came in so quick story if any of you know the guy at sea world my wife was on stage for he got taken under okay he almost died san diego oh, I thought it was a female bald that guy under mm -mm, well many people have gotten taken under over the years but the most recent incident right before the death in orlando this guy gets taken under okay friend of mine my wife's on stage for it saw the whole thing august bush comes in and he has a meeting with us and he goes Okay. And he just sits down and all his managers are behind him and he's got all the trainers. He goes, I don't want to talk to the management. I want to talk to you guys. And he goes, how are we going to never let this happen again? And we're all kind of nervous, right? And, 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 and what did somebody say? Someone goes, you know, I couldn't have, one of the female trainers goes, I couldn't have held my breath as long as, I won't say the guy's name who got taken under, as he did. I would have been dead if I had to hold my breath for a minute and a half like so-and-so did. And he goes, okay. What do you want to do about it or something? He was very nice. And she and she said something about a gym. And he goes, okay, we're going to put a gym in. Where, where can we put it? Hey, so-and-so, where can we put that gym? Okay, we can put it over there. He goes, okay, we're going to put that in next. And then he, someone goes, we, a lot of us have second jobs to pay, to, to, to make rent. And he goes, okay, who in this room? This is in San Diego at the time. Rent's a little more expensive. And he goes, who in this room has second jobs? I, at the time, worked at Petco. I was a dog wow. trainer at Petco because I knew I was going to leave and start dog training. And he goes, who in there? And like half of us raised our hand. And he goes, okay, we're giving you a raise. I don't want to see, he like told his managers, like, I don't want to, 
like I guess the red tape, right? And yeah. Bobby goes, I don't want to see any of that. We're giving you guys a significant raise. Next. And I was like, this guy's the man, dude. He gets S He done. gets S done. He's not wow. going through all the red tape. He didn't want to hear from his management. I like that story. I thought you were, I was like afraid because you're like going to call it this powerful dude, but you kind of threw some love his way. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. yeah, he was great. It's amazing to see when people, and then the best is when they actually like I was like follow 70. through. Oh, and he fully followed through. We yeah. got the, we, our rate, our, our pay, like we got like a 40% raise like a week later. That's fantastic. 40% raise. I don't know if I've it ever was called it like a danger raise. Only the killer well trainers got it. I don't know. Created a lot of problems in the department. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know if I've ever shared this, but like it reminds me of this August Bush guy. But um, do you know who Jamie Dimon is? He's yes. the chairman, CEO, and president of JP Morgan Chase. Yeah. He's considered the most powerful banker in the world, as far as I know. Um, and I, I think about that, what would you call it? Reputation, the you'll do what you say you're going to do type of thing. Now I'm sure he's not a, a saint by any means, but I he, doubt has, it. he has a good reputation, but I don't think he's known for like, I just don't think he's known for not delivering on what he says he's going to deliver right, on. Right. But I, he has like a multi trillion dollar bank. And it's like to think about somebody has made their way up through the world in whatever way they did to where, they can snap their fingers and billions and billions of dollars or trillions of dollars can potentially be moved around. And, and imagine the power of being a person who does what they say they're going to do. And now, you know, imagine just like someone's like, Hey, you need a billion. Boom, done. It's yeah. done. And then you're like, Oh, well he told me, so I know it's going to happen. Yeah. Like I don't even need paperwork. It's just yeah. going to happen. Yeah. That sounds like this uh, August Bush guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like just delivered. Okay. Can we get back to the zoo stuff real quick? Sure. So, okay. Joel, you know, now lords over the entire world, right? And and you have the opportunity to shut down Wild Animal Park, shut down the zoo, shut, shut down, down SeaWorld. SeaWorld. Shut down any place. Oh, uh, let's start you with San Diego. San Diego, let's start Diego San Diego start. Just to start, because I know those places, so I would I want to get the feel for how like your thoughts on these places so like let's start with the zoo like d is the zoo a, a place san diego zoo is that okay i haven't been there in 15 years <laughs> i don't know i haven't been there in about 10 but yeah but based on what you remember about it is that something that you think is does the good outweigh the bad there what good do they do um they do uh, they i think they like fund a lot of things so research they let a lot like SeaWorld did the same thing we'd let research teams come in and learn about whales right real hard to learn about them in the wild so they're all involved in that like there's organizations the aza like you have to be an aza accredited zoo it's a it was a big deal american even in my zoology, school maybe is that what it stands for um aza okay. american zoological association okay. so it's a big deal because then you're part of this network and you all talk and you have conferences and the animal rights folks kind of stay off your butt a little bit because you're trying to do good and you're researching stuff and you're letting people in and you're, you know, it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a good thing they say. So do I shut down these places? No, I don't shut down these places. I, um, no, I don't shut down any of them. So do we shut down the bear thing in Eastern Europe or no? Is it different here or? I don't know. I've never seen the bear thing in Eastern Europe like this lady's talking about. I'm just trying to think of what are the like benefits that would outweigh a animal being kept in captivity? Because I'm I'm open minded and I'm saying I'm coming more from a philosophy back background. So if you can like explain to me why there should be no animals in captivity, I would disagree, but I would be willing to hear why. Yeah. Like what is the overwhelming evidence to think that this should never happen anywhere? Like including like sh shutting down of all zoos. I think the, the, the reason they should be, there should be animals in captivity is what I said, isn't a big deal, but it is a thing like kids can go see those animals. Okay. That's part of it. Another one would be endangered species. So every zoo, if they ever, if, if a white rhino ever breeds, they're going to make sure you hear about it. Now, I want to know if, uh, if, if, if the white rhino, if, if we're putting them back and we're actually populating the wild, cause I'm not sure what, I guess having 10 or 20 or hundred of them in captivity is a good thing and they don't go extinct. 
I suppose that's good, but they're eventually going extinct if you don't put them back in the wild and and they thrive. They're, by the way, some animals are meant to just go away. Everyone knows that, right? Yeah, the but animal think, goes I extinct. We, I think we push them quite along early path. Habitat destruction, maybe. Yeah. There's a lot of habitat out there to be had. I had we, a, There was a guy who worked before. on the Panda Project. He was a SeaWorld vet. And he worked on the panda project and he came to talk to us trainers and he said, uh, he said, yeah, pandas should go extinct. That's they, scary. they breed horribly. They, the main thing is they're just, they're horrible breeders. They look cool though. Yeah. They're cool looking. China owns all the pandas in the world, by the way. It's kind of an interesting fact. No one else owns a single panda. Them? Yeah. They lease them to zoos, but they always own them. They Can't own every just single have one. some extra kids and not tell them about it or some extra pandas. Yeah. But China government is not about that. So anyway, um, the pandas, he said, should go extinct. They, they were keeping them basically going. Do you remember when and we some animals should about you saying that we were not, they're not like reducing the habitat. It was like podcast two or something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, I, I mean, there is the urban sprawl and the general and just overall that there's 330 350 million people right in the United States. And, um, and I think the thing that the challenge is that there's only certain habitat, I was watching this documentary on the, on elk. Uh, it was called, I think called, uh, elk in America or American elk. And it was on this Tubi. Have you seen this Tubi? It's like an app yes, on your yes. thing. Um, I recommend it. It was just telling, ta talking all about elk. And then it was talking about from them growing into, uh, how they got kind of wiped out during the, what is it, 1800s when there was not a whole lot of care for animals with the bison getting wiped out and so forth. What was really cool though is they were getting into how the um, antlers work and how they shed them and then the whole rutting process and the, the yeah. mating thing. And this this big, huge uh, bull elk rather, he just is about to like, you know, go into heat or whatever you call it when it's a guy. And he's just peeing all over his neck and then like everywhere. And then he is just like a big puddle. And then he's just rolling around yeah. in this urine. And then he's just running out to just brawl yeah. with whoever he can find and then try to get like a bunch of cow elk to like breed with. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. And then they fight. Then the, the two elk, it's a bit, it's a bit humane in the way that like, they have a system for fighting where they lock horns and then are lock antlers technically. And then they basically push each other like yeah. a fight. And then one gets out of there. And then, yeah, the one, one realizes the other is bigger and stronger. And it's like, yeah. okay, later bro. And then yeah. the, they'll chase out, like he'll chase after him for a while. Yeah. And the guy's like, okay, I'm leaving bro. And then it's over. Like, yeah, I love that stuff. I know you do. I, I could watch like, I mean, sometimes I'll just like find either a good native American documentary or some type of wild animal. Um, I mentioned the one about the guy who is the guy who played, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's the, um, animal. I don't know. It's like an animal show, just like all the nature ones. I can't remember, but it's a Attenborough. No, no, this is a newer guy, but he was like all a right. buff guy. He played a uh, Bane in, um, in, okay. Do anyway. you know what I'm talking about? You don't know yeah. who he is. That's what I mean. Yeah, I know who okay. Bane played Bane. Okay, that guy. So he was, the, he was a commentator, but I just like yeah. sitting around and just watching like live animal stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about you? I love it. Um, what was I just going to say? It was about, um, oh, here's why I'm not, I'm going to basically stand up for animals in captivity. I just saw yesterday, this is a big news story. A grizzly killed two people and a dog in Montana. I think it was Montana. Two hikers killed yeah. them. And then at the end of the, it says the news story. Then it like the video I'm looking at my phone and then it says, and they found the bear and they killed the bear. And I go, which is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Okay. Killed two people and a dog. The bear, the bear should be put down. I go, Hey, I know what this, I know what's going to happen here. And I go, let's go to the comments. I'll bring it up right now if I can find it. Guess what? Getting flamed for killing the bear. They hate it. Yeah. They hate it. Next time a dog mauls a child and they say, they have to say in the, in the article or the news story, and then the dog was put down. If they say the dog was put down, it just mauled a child. I want you to look at the comments and you're going to see how many people freaking hate 
children. It's the, it, that's why I will, I will, but that's why I'm not closing any place. Cause I know where they're going, dude. They, they don't care about a dog mauling a child. They don't care about dog ripping a child's face off. You don't put the dog down ever. That's why animal rights. That's why it is such a virus because they will just, they will just keep going. So your, your contention is that at the core of every animal rights activist, there, there's no the satiation. Belief, it's a belief that every animal is equal to a human. Valued the same as a human. A, a real animal rights. Yes. And they are very vocal. So even if there's some kind of fringy people, they'll sort of, they'll always like back off or they'll take a position of animal rights because they'll be shouted down. Mm -hmm. The dog training world, by the way, is being, I, I, I said this years ago, it's being, it's now completely taken over the force free movement, animal rights. It's not a dog training movement at this point. It is an animal rights movement at this point. I, we are seeing a lot of that flourish out of some of the. Oh, totally. And I, I knew I saw it happening and now it's happened. And the activist, activist class, it's, it's animal rights. This is not dog training anymore. This is, and that's why I said like these, these folks, you need to, you need to, um, you need to know who you're fighting, right? And you need to take on the tactics of them because they have brutal, brutal tactics. And if you're going to fight against them, you got to be as brutal because they will, it's dangerous. So, um, that makes a ton of sense. I think this idea of the one thing I would say about this is that I don't know how I would feel if I was the victim of an attack like that, but being in the from wild, the yeah, yeah, from the bear, but it is the Chris Rock, you know, tiger went tiger kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> it's really hard for me to get mad at the bear, you know, I'm not mad at the bear. Um, it depends where it is. The bear now, should keep living and keep killing people though. But if it's which in, he will do. Let's say it's in um in town and it kills somebody. It's a bit different, right? Than if it's in the backcountry and you just run like you just walked up on this big huge bear. Like you know what I'm saying? Is that yeah, not a little different? I mean, is, kids are a little different didn't anyway. Say we went around killing all bears in the area. They killed the bear. One uh, bear. There's a lot of them. Yeah. They killed that one bear. And go from Montana up to Alaska. You know how much land is there? You know how many bears around? We're not, they're not like an endangered species. He killed people and he will kill more people. That's yeah. a problem. But to be fair, to be fair, I saw this thing on and Yellowstone. A dog. And it was bear or it was bears. I don't know if we talked about this last week or I'm telling you or somebody else about yeah, it. Yeah, I but, saw Yellowstone with the bear. And and they had these dogs or sorry, they had these bears, and then there's these people from Yellowstone that were visiting the park, and one of them has their kid in the hand, and they're chasing from the street toward oh, I the thought bears. You the show. No, this happened. Yeah, they're morons. But so it's like, if if the bear's like, okay, I need to take this one out, I'm like, okay, I mean, natural selection, this is crazy. This is like crossing the yeah, line. Yeah, but not the kid. Not the kid. I mean, it's not his wrong. fault that his parents are total idiots, right? Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to do this. It's one bear. We didn't annihilate. Oh, this isn't like after Jaws and everyone just started killing great whites based on the movie. Like they killed the one bear, the single bear. Yeah. They killed the people. We didn't go kill a bunch of bears. So I it's one bear. I, um, I have, uh, I've always wanted to do this. Can I dip out of here real quick and just return real quick? Yeah. I see it on here's Rogan. I, here's and then you can just say. do like a monologue. Are you going to edit quick? it? No, here's, no. What, here's what I'm going to say. I thought about this when I saw that bear story. You better go. Okay. I'll be right back. I saw, really cool. I'm just going to yeah. talk to them. They'll, they'll be happy because I'm going to look at the camera, which I never do. All right, I'm going to stare at the camera. Here's the question that I have. What? I was like, okay, I'm in the woods. There's a grizzly there. What dog do I bring that's going to protect me? And then I said, there's no one dog. But I think there's two dogs. If I have two, um, what is that dog? Ali, Ali Bobby. I, I forget it or two Anatolian shepherds or two. Um, I think the bear, it's a grizzly bear, right? It's a killer, but I think my two 140 pound male Eastern European guard dogs. I, I think, 
I think we we get into it. This is a grizzly, right? But I think we get into it, and I don't think we win, but I think we get out of there with our lives. I don't think the bear wants that smoke that much of those dogs. Like me and Prince and another Prince, like we're getting smoked. It's a grizzly bear. But you're talking 140 pound, twice the size of Prince dogs. Not twice the size. We're going to put up a fight. Two against I'm, a grizzly I'm, bear, or what did I miss? Yeah, here? two giant like um Anatolians or two Tibetan mastiffs, They're just big, big dogs. What are you going to do to a grizzly? Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, that's fair. But I, but I got my two dogs. I think, I don't think we die. I think maybe one of the dogs dies, but I think they're just going to bite that bear hard enough where he's going to go like, mm, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. That guy's kind of he's not too big, and these dogs are going to bite me, and I'm out. I mean, it's, it's tough with, um, it's tough with like a grizzly because they're so much bigger than a black bear, right? Oh yeah. They're, and they're so much more aggressive. I just saw a video of a grizzly killing a black bear, which happens a lot, but I've never seen a video of it. Just thrashed him. And I know we have talked about this before, but as far as what's the difference as far as, um, polar bears, like, yeah, we've talked about they're bigger. I think grizzlies are the best right? I, I get pushed back on this from the pod all the time they're just more aggressive but aren't they just all, grizzlies a lot bigger than a polar bear no polar bears are bigger by weight but they just they have more fat too so it's just that they're feeding on probably fattier species or whatever yeah they, and they just don't they eat meat or no that polar bears all they eat is meat and they just they're they, they need more fat for the winter because they're as you go north the animals get bigger grizzlies eat what or south what what do grizzlies eat mainly meat really yeah but grizzly black bears pretty... black bears eat like berries and stuff. yeah yeah and i'm sure grizzly comes across an apple so protein and sugar are the two most sought after things in the wild salt would be up there as well but protein and sugar because they're the rarest so a lot of animals not all but like if a raccoon comes across the mouse he's stoked if he comes across a strawberry he's stoked if he comes across a piece of cabbage or lettuce he is not stoked because they're the the other two are more rare but he'll eat it what Anyways, he'll still eat it though they love it a strawberry yeah but they'll eat the cabbage just maybe just yeah but like that stuff's just not sought after okay vegetables generally speaking except if you're a cow but they have a whole different gut so cow's guts are made for just cellulose so just um grass and they have bacteria giant vats of bacteria in their belly but their their belly's different it's made for that then they digest the bacteria if you ever wonder how a cow gets so big or a bowl or something and how it's so strong and all it's is grass and that's a that's a vegan argument oh the biggest elephants and the biggest animals in the world it's because their gut is different their it's gut is different ignoring than ignoring the genetics of an animal in general right i mean what do you mean certain i mean a brontosaurus could be the biggest thing in the world but it's still eating like yeah i mean it doesn't mean i mean people go like because lions eat meat right so that's the other yeah. end of it right this yeah. is do you want to look like a lion what a lion i mean it's a bit of a simplified argument right yeah that's true. in any direction yeah i just think it's interesting i learned all this stuff in school like i learned cool sh stuff did you like have a sugar there? and protein are rarer hence sought after more in the wild i never knew that i thought it was cool what about bears? Did you have bears at Moore Park? No, no bear. Do you remember? You had hyenas, right? We had a hyena. We had a wolf. We had a lion. We had a tiger. We had a lot of monkeys, a lot of birds, a lot of hoof stock. We had two camels. Have you worked with Camel. monkeys? Yeah, I walked a monkey, a baboon. What do I you, told you that last podcast. I don't consider a baboon a monkey. Well, it is. Well, I don't care. It's Is that new or old? Old world? Old, old, old world. Old world. Okay. Monkeys so, and macaques. I like think the of same. these little guys that you see in oh, the like Costa Rica. Capuchin. They're awesome. The Costa Rican things. How smart are they, do you think? Their brain, capuchin monkeys, their brain size is like the biggest of any animal compared to their body, I think. Really? Yeah, like the biggest, because they're only that big, but they have a real big brain. That doesn't mean they're the smartest, yeah. but they are smart. Have you ever met an orangutan or orangutan as I used to they call it? They had one at a place I volunteered at. You met Super it? Super smart. No, he was like in a pen, but okay. like right there. Okay. They're freaking awesome. And they're and pretty I had athletic, a, huh? They don't look like that, but they can. 
Yeah. There was a story of the, 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 oh, and the, the guy we had, they had a young orangutan there and the guy would be in the office, his handler, and he would just be wrestling with the orangutan all the time because he had to show him like from a young age, he's like, I can win, but he can't win. Right? Eventually he wouldn't win, but he, they, it was a little, it was like, this place was a little old school back then. Um, like but the, the orangutan, that... I heard a story at that place. The orangutan, basically, he got mad at the trainer. Here, give me your hand. And he just took the trainer's arm and he just went like this. I don't want to do it. And then he just stayed right like this. But and he then, didn't bite it, right? No. And he just looked at him. Like, what are you, you going to do? Like, And he just did it for a long time. Remember, and he's just like, I will bite. The remember the video I showed you like two weeks ago where that guy was a bit odd looking and he was next to that, what was it, a... Uh, chimpanzee or something like that okay mm -hmm. remember that and it, and the guy was like kind of, the guy was kind of awkward looking and he was oh yeah I yeah and that. then he was like the, the the chimpanzee was like was it a gorilla i forgot what it was, oh, it was so, a gorilla it was, it was so it was in the wild yeah it was so close to his head i'm like is he gonna rip yeah. his face off like, yeah you shouldn't go out it was this really weird looking guy that go they now go to gorillas and like cruise around and just look at the gorillas and this guy was so weird looking he shouldn't go out there like you don't know what's gonna trip the grill out and go. Why do you look so weird? I'm gonna, I'm gonna eliminate you from, you know, from breathing, from breathing, because you you shouldn't look like this. Yeah, it, it seems kind of dangerous sad. to me. Kind of sad, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I think that grizzly bears to me seem like the ultimate though. Just they're 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 so unbelievable. Like you want to see them in the wild, but you really don't. You know. I don't ever want to. No. I would never, I don't think I would ever go in grizzly country without a gun. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, and I, I don't know exactly where grizzly country is. Yeah. When I was in Montana, I still, I still brought, um, a gun, uh, maybe multiple guns, but like the, even still people think about this cause there's certain size guns that you would want for a bigger, you've heard this, right? Like a bear gun, they yeah, call yeah. it like, like, yeah. Hey, you know, you don't want a 22 if you've got a grizzly bear chasing after you, but yeah. For instance, a Glock is like a nine millimeter. And I'd say, well, if they're also very light and easy to carry. And it's like, well, that's not good for a grizzly bear. But I'm like, still, better it's better not. than my fists. Yeah. Like, I feel like 10 shots could help you yeah. survive. Yeah. Um, sure, you could, you know, have some big monster grizzly gun. Yeah. But then you have to carry it around all the time. Yeah. Which isn't that fun. I think they should introduce grizzlies to, um, to people where to places where like all these people who, who get mad about killing a grizzly is it's kind of like the wolf argument, right? It's like people go, we need to introduce the wolves into these, you know, into these places in Montana. And they're like, yeah, let's introduce them into the city where you guys are. Yeah. Because the people For that are sure. voting do not actually have to deal with. No, the they'll never go of, there. Of the, the cattle and stuff. Yeah. Cause they kill all the cattle. Yeah. Introduce grizzlies to, um, around uh bend oregon and see if the hiking and the the all that stuff goes down and all you know so i bet you if you were uh moving to you you guys asked for it if you were moving to idaho like Coeur d'Alene or whatever we're talking about yeah guarantee you're gonna roll up and you'd be like hi joel beckman and they're gonna be like oh great you know you know where are you moving from and you'd be like uh originally from go. eugene i'm originally from eugene originally. oh yeah i would say that then they oh no they wouldn't accept me Eugene, right? Eugene's yeah, a bit I'm more from. rural, right? No. No? I mean, it's rural, but it's, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's foolish though, because there's such a, um, like there's, there's um, cowboys and there's outdoor hunter and just different types of outdoor people, like cattlemen and stuff that do this stuff that like, if they knew that California is not just one thing of, san francisco oh, that's true folks right um i actually saw this instagram thing and um right before you came over and it's this guy who works as like a ranch hand cowboy guy and he went down south toward the south part of maui and he was like why in the wild and like wild like uh, got a feral goat like he roped a feral goat okay oh just just like went out there was like i'm gonna rope a feral goat and just that's did that cool. like i'm sure the people in montana would just like hot tip a guy like that oh yeah you know like yeah. you don't think hawaii would have somebody like that yeah but yeah. it just goes to show there's people in every state right there's yeah. they know. know that i mean 
They understand that. Hey, let's end this thing. You want, you're done? Okay. Yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. You want to get some food? Yeah. All, All right. right. Let's do it. Love you guys. See you guys. All right. Bye.